Hi, my name is Chris and today I want to start talking about podcasting and most specifically about the making of podcasts. The last few months and almost years I've been doing a lot of podcast editing for different clients, co-producing one podcast and having my own show and during that process with consulting clients, editing for clients and so on I've learned a ton about the medium and there's one thing that I think pretty much every podcast should have but not very many do have and that is show notes most specifically time markers for which you can use as a customer watching or listening to a podcast where you can jump to the specific time show notes time markers inside of a podcast where something interesting is being talked about so today i want to talk about why that's interesting why i think that that should be something that probably every podcast has and also how you can achieve that at least on a mac I am also working on a podcast course on Skillshare and more topics about podcasting. So if you want to know more about this, subscribe to this channel. And of course, as always, let me know in the comments below what your questions might be or reach out directly to me and we might be able to set up a consulting call about the whole topic and those things. Now to jump into the topic of time markers. What are time markers inside of a podcast? But for that, let me just show you what they are and how they work. First up, what you can see on the screen right here is my iPhone and I have Overcast open right now with my podcast that I create myself. Now, what you can do with these podcast time markers is once you go into the episode specifically and the information sheet of the episode, you can see that there is all this information, all this descriptive text on what the topic is about and then also relevant links. And then you have the chapters or show notes. And those are just time markers which show the minute and second for every single part of the video or the podcast in this case. And then going down below, you have a couple more links. But these are not as useful as when you actually also so incorporate them into the episode and for that I'm just going to start the episode and then open the listening part and by the way Overcast is really incredible in terms of the speed improvements and the voice boost that you can use to make everything a little more understandable and also listen way quicker so that's something that is really cool but the most important thing about the podcast show note markers is that now you have this little icon on the left side of the play bar and then you can jump over to the show notes and you can literally just jump through the different sections and you also can see how long every single section is so for example here making life my game is a one minute and 23 second segment so if i click there it automatically jumps immediately to that specific place inside of that episode and that is really really convenient now going over to the screen this is something that is available in many other applications as well for example right now on my mac i have podcasts for mac open and here you can also see that you have the episode notes right here for the episode that i have currently playing and then on the right hand side at the corner here i can also jump over to the chapter markers and you can see there i also have the chapter markers which are 1 minute 56 and then so on this time around it actually shows when the chapter starts, not the duration of every single chapter. Now, why would you want to do this if you have a podcast or if you're just an avid listener and why you should advocate for this? And I think that is manifold. One, you can really simply jump to the section that is most interesting to you. And that is something that is invaluable. If you have long intros, for example, people can simply skip that. But for example, with one show that I edit and also co-produce called the Embody Podcast, we actually also use this for meditations. And that is really interesting because those podcast episodes are not necessarily some Something that is just listened to once but those are actually episodes that are listened to multiple times especially those meditations where you sometimes want to just skip the intro because you already have listened to that but you want to have the meditation part again so that is something that is also very powerful for a listener if there are sponsored messages you can simply skip those that kind of defeats the purpose of the sponsored message for the podcast host. However, if you have podcast listeners that are really avid listeners and the same sponsored message comes over and over again, this makes it really simple for them to jump forward and just to be in the show and not have to worry about those two minutes or something that you spend explaining something that they have already heard over and over again. 
But one of those main things for me personally is that if you have this kind of setup in a podcast, it is really great to know how long this chapter is going to go for, how long you will have to listen, or which part you might be most interested in to listen to. And that actually can help for a producer as well as the person listening, because for one, as a producer, I can go back to a podcast episode and immediately find the section that I'm looking for, because I can see how the whole episode is laid out, where the segments are that I need to find. So that makes it really convenient to find certain segments again. And as a listener, it streamlines my process of knowing what topics are being talked about, where they're talked about, and maybe I'm just interested in certain smaller bites of that episode. So those are really good reasons to implement this. But now the big question is, how do you actually do this? And there are a couple of tools available for you to actually get into that process. Of course, I can't really talk about all the different programs out there. That would be way too long of a video. So I'm just going to focus on Audition that I am using mainly for the podcast editing. And then also the different programs that you can use to actually make these time markers, no matter which editing program you use. And also these programs are really helpful because you can not only change the time markers, but you can actually attach a image to the episode and also change the title and the description description of that mp3 file that you want to produce. So let's jump onto the screen into Audition and I show you how you can do these markers, how you can export them and then how you can use them in the mp3 file. Now what you're seeing on the screen right now is a completely finished episode for the Embody podcast and all these little white lines are basically time markers. And here on the left hand side of the screen you can actually also see all these time markers and some of them are markers for me as a producer, some of them are actually markers for the listener that are going to end up in the show. Now how you can actually set these up is pretty simple. You go to the place of the episode that you want to make a marker at and then you just simply hit the keyboard shortcut M and as you can see we have a new marker right there. Of course, the next thing that you can do is double click that text and then you can edit that. Another super useful keyboard shortcut for this case is the backslash, because with that you can actually immediately jump to the marker that you just last pasted. So if you make this marker marker number three and you add some text, and then you jump forward and you go back, you actually have still the ability to edit this marker. This is extraordinarily helpful if you are actually listening through from start to finish, but you notice that there's a question coming or there might be a topic shift coming, you can already place the marker and then continue listening until you actually change the text of the marker. At least that's how I do it very often. Now I'm just going to get rid of this marker because of course I'm not going to use this, but what I wanna do next is actually go to the markers, command A, go to file, export and then selected markers to CSV file. And what that does is it immediately exports all these markers that I have selected into a text file that you can see on the screen right here. And then I can open this with sublime text, for example, and you can see there's all these markers right there with their timings. Now this is something where I actually built a little tool for myself and if there's interest out there, I might actually release this to the public or make it some kind of a website. For myself, I made this an Alfred workflow and you can also learn more about these later on on this channel and also on my Skillshare profile where I have a class about Alfred. Now what I have made for myself is a task here where I can reformat these markers and you can see I can format them as show notes. When I hit that, the text file actually simply changes. And when I open this text file now, what you can see is that I simply have the show note markers the way that I want them on the other side. So this is actually something that I could copy paste into the description of a podcast. But coming back to the actual file here, what I want to be doing here is actually export this with the markers so that they are also supported by the different applications like Overcast and so on. So what I do here is in this case, I wanna just make it a little quicker and I wanna just demonstrate this functionality. So I'm just going to select the first six minutes of this podcast, go to file, export, multi-track mixdown, entire session, which would be the one that I would be choosing. And then I make my session settings here. The important part is that I would choose the WAV file and then also have the include markers and other metadata activated right there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just do this for the time selection because I wanna just export this small piece, but the settings are pretty much the same. So hitting export on this one, I just have to wait a few minutes until the export actually is done. Once the export is finished, I can close Adobe Audition. Now I have the show note markers that we just created from the text file. 
and the reformatting. Then we have the list LaForce mix down and we have the PKF file. Now the PKF I just delete because I usually don't ever use this again. But what I can do with this file now, I can open it up inside of one of those applications that can actually edit and also add new markers inside of the file and also attach images and so on. There are actually many tools on the market that you can use for this purpose. One of them is called Podcast Chapters, and this is actually available in the Mac App Store. It is costing a little bit more money, but it has great features like you can listen to the episode while you actually edit the markers and so on. I personally have not bought this program, so I can't really stand behind it. What I am using is a free alternative called Forecast, and this is made by Marco Armand, who's also the creator of Overcast, the podcast player. And this is actually some very simple application. It works for the purpose that I want to use it for and it's completely free to download. So you can download the latest version, install it like any other application and then we actually can just open forecast and wait until it's open. There it is. Import audio, go to our desktop file, the list of force and open that right up. And as you can see right here, we already have the markers that I set for this file. What you also see is that it actually already imported certain elements. This is because this application actually remembers the podcast title based on the file names. And it actually learned that this format of a file name is the Embody Podcast with Candice Wu. So that's something that it automatically did for myself. And then it also added the number for the title. Now, you can also see that there's a picture already selected. However, I want to change this. So what I can do there is I can simply go to the folder that has these images and I drag and drop the image onto here and automatically you can see it is replacing that. You can add a summary if you want to do some new lines in this. So if you want to write something, you can actually do Alt and Enter and then you can also continue writing. And you can also change these markers or you can add new ones. So you could, for example, make one at 200. So this would be a new marker and then you can change a title and you can also attach a URL to this marker, which can be quite handy, especially for sponsored messages and the like. You can, of course, also change all the other markers. And something that you can also use here is that you can actually choose between the quality level that you would like your podcast to be in. Generally, the 128 setting is pretty much the standard out there, specifically for voice podcasts. If you include more music, you might want to change it to 160. But something to keep in mind is that the quality of 128 is pretty good, and the file size is actually something that you should be aware of whenever you create your podcast so that they don't fill up too much space on different types of devices like Apple Watches or iPhones and so on. One. So now that we have set up our markers and changed our title and all those things, you can simply just save this and it actually just saves to the same place where you already have your WAV file. You hit enter and then you have this file right there. And what you can see is that it actually shows the image that we selected. And if I hit the space bar on this, it opens up this preview and you can see that the artist and the album is set, the title is set and the image is here. And if I click here, you can already see the time markers happening there as well. Now that you have these markers set up and your finished mp3 file, you can just simply upload this to your podcasting host. And then after publishing, these show notes and chapter markers should just show up in whatever podcast player actually supports them. Not all of them do, but I think they're pretty much on the way there. I hope this was a helpful and interesting video for you to watch and learn from. If you want to learn more about these type of thing, please leave those questions in the comments below and I will make sure to make videos or courses about the topics at hand. I am still working on a podcasting course for Skillshare, so if you're interested in that and you want to get updates, you should just subscribe to my email newsletter and also to this YouTube channel because these are the places where I'm going to publish this information probably first. Now I'm really hoping and crossing my fingers that more people are starting to implement these chapter markers in their podcasts, especially if they're longer than 20 minutes, so that I can see as a listener what I'm going to do. But of course, as a podcast creator, this is also truly interesting because when you come back to an episode that you have edited a long time ago, this helps you to find that section that you want to set, find again and makes it way easier to repurpose your content later on. And with that, I hope you have an amazing day. Make your podcasts more accessible and also a little easier to navigate. And I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.